Megan is strongly allergic to the B word, simply because it speaks to her personality. Hello friends, welcome to the breaking news about the notorious hypocritical couple Harry and Meghan Markle on our Kate Middleton and the Queen News Version 2 channel. The Duchess of Sussex looked at the history, definition, and usage of the words bitch, difficult, and their cousin in the most recent edition of her podcast, Archetypes. Victoria Jackson and Melody Hobson, two businesswomen, and entrepreneur Meghan Markle discussed how the labels are incorrectly assigned to independent women. Author Alison Yarrow, naturalist Lucy Cook, and creator and writer Robin Thede all joined the Royal for in-depth discussions regarding the stigma attached to the word. Meghan admitted to having a visceral reaction every time she hears the B word, revealing her personal hate for it. The Duchess stated before speaking with Ms. Yarrow, we have been discussing that it means for women to speak up for themselves, to be empowered, and the labels like difficult, pushy, or the B word that frequently result from doing so. I've made it clear that I detest these designations, particularly the final one. Megan then introduces Miss Yarrow to the show, and the two have a lengthy conversation about the word's etymology. The writer stated, The word bitch, according to etymologists, originated from a Greek epithet that implied that women were like dogs in heat, demanding male attention. The worst thing you could call an English lady, worse than a whore, was a bitch, according to a more recent definition that was recorded in the 1890s, an Appalachian. It was therefore formalized as a method to denigrate women by calling them hypersexual, but it also removed somewhat the sense that they were goddesses, so it removed this holy force and substituted demeaning sexuality in its stead. The two continue their discussion of the 1990s and the beginning of the 2000s, portraying it as a period when a new contemporary sort of woman was emerging, a woman who was getting married at a later age, finishing higher education, and joining the workforce. They discussed the advent of the 24-hour news cycle and the bitchification of women in the media, as Ms. Yarrow puts it. She said, When it came to treating women at that time, Different archetypes, derivatives, corollaries, and even the word bitch were utilized to undermine their identities and bitchify them. Megan noted that she had a visceral reaction to this phrase, in part because of the frequent and open name-calling, adding, we were not aware of its granular placement at the time that it was implanted. Of course, the demonization of these women had repercussions. Ms. Yarrow continued, because actual women and girls witnessed these events unfold, all of these perceptions of these and other renowned women had a very real influence on them. Furthermore, the sexist and racist nature of the media portrayal of these ladies at the time was not truly a topic of widespread discussion. We were only internalizing these stereotypes of women as being hypersexual, unfeminine, and inept as fact. Thus, that had a significant influence on how we saw the prospects for our own lives. Megan has first-hand experience with this kind of branding. Some of her detractors gave her the moniker Duchess Difficult. It is said that the nickname was given to her when she was still employed by the royal family as a result of her persistent requests for personal assistance. The moniker was first used in 2018, not long after the new royal's nuptials to Prince Harry, and in the midst of persistent accusations that she was extraordinarily demanding of the palace staff, several aides are said to have left because of Meghan's difficult conduct. However, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex dispute some of the former staff members' claims. Meghan made a suggestion on a tactic she has used to stop the phrase from having an impact on her and instead use it to encourage her to accept her new life. Megan made it obvious that she has no interest in utilizing the phrase, despite several of her guests talking about reclaiming it and using it in a good way. The Duke's wife said, The B word must be embraced and reclaimed by certain women in order to remove its power 
and perhaps even utilize humor to diffuse the situation. Others may find it to be just understanding the meaning of the term or its relative, difficult, yet being oblivious to it, overcoming discomfort, or even insecurity it could bring on by persevering. Additionally, they occasionally use their research to motivate them and advance their careers, businesses, and endeavors. The labels, according to Megan, are frequently used as a detour from the amazing qualities certain women possess. She also acknowledged that her friends had encouraged her to investigate the particular archetype that had been troubling her for the previous two years and had encouraged her to confront the problem head on. In response to the moniker, the Duchess has previously stated that she is not tough, I'm picky. In a recent episode of Archetypes, Megan chatted with Professor Emily Bernard, comedian and writer Z-Way, and American actress Issa Rae about some of the stereotypes that are often applied to black women. The Duchess stated in the podcast, simply state your needs. You are free to establish boundaries and be direct. It does not make you tough or demanding. Rather, it makes you plain. Victoria Arbiter, a royal authority, asserted that Meghan has retaliated against some of the criticisms of her reputation by utilizing her Spotify podcast. Ms. Arbiter stated last week on the Australian morning program Sunrise, My opinion is that her podcast has provided a fantastic forum for her to fight back against some of the perceived injustices. People are viewing her words this week as a rejection of that title. It was created in 2018 in response to accusations that Megan was very challenging to deal with. Many employees said in emails sent at 5 a.m. that she and Harry's communication with them had caused them to cry. The Sussexes have vehemently refuted these assertions. With the podcast, she has had the chance to sort of put in her two cents, perhaps not quite as overtly as in the interviews, such as with Oprah Winfrey, but still a chance to state the facts as she sees them. An outspoken royal expert said, Over the years, I've worked with and was friends with some high flyers, who were indeed strong, independent women, especially in a work setting that was predominantly male. They were at times devils, but they had to be because of the stress they were under. However, they were good at their job even if they were ruthless. They still earned respect from their team. They still had manners. And for any problems, they would do their best to help. Megan thinks people would say B about these women, maybe because she has been called this due to how she treats people. I doubt Megan has earned any respect from her staff, let alone friends. Megan has stepped on everyone she's encountered. I would definitely say she's not a strong, independent woman. She's done nothing without help, especially from men. What do you think of Megan's views on women's issues? Are they completely out of orbit? Let us know your thoughts below in the comment section. We hope you found this video helpful. Don't forget to leave a like, share, and subscribe to the channel if you like it. Thank you for watching this newsletter. See you in the next videos. Goodbye.